This is the Surface Laptop 7 with the Snapdragon X Plus chip. I've been using this laptop every single day for the last two weeks, so here are my honest, unbiased thoughts to help you decide if you should buy one. To begin with, this is hands down the best looking laptop on the market. It looks absolutely gorgeous. Scrolling on the trackpad feels really nice. It feels exactly like a Mac. However, the click is slightly different. And likewise, the keyboard is really good as well. The keyboard itself is really nice, great to type on. However, the backlight on it is quite dim. During the day, you can barely tell that it is on. When it comes to the screen, it is touchscreen. It is very responsive, it works quite well. The quality of image you get on the screen is amazing as well. When I've got this plugged into my main monitor, quite often I will decide to watch anime or YouTube directly on the Surface Laptop screen instead because the image is just so much crisper and it looks really good. The only downside with the screen is it does get quite glary, especially when you're in direct sunlight. Now, holding the laptop and walking around is quite nice. Every corner is really flush, which is good. My OCD, there is about a one millimeter difference between the top and the bottom. So this top panel sticks out just by one millimeter, which means when you carry your laptop like I do, you will feel that slightly. That does annoy me a little bit, but it is functional. That one millimeter difference means you can open your laptop with a single hand, a single finger, anywhere on the device. You don't have to find a groove somewhere in the center to open it. When it comes to the quality of the speakers and the sound output, I would say it's good for a laptop. Quite often, I would find myself just playing it directly from the Surface laptop instead of putting my headphones on. In terms of peripherals, there is a charging port on the right-hand side of the device, and there are two USB-C ports and a USB-A port and a headphone jack. What was really nice is I was able to plug in an external monitor, keyboard, and mouse with a single USB-C adapter. I didn't have to go out and purchase a fancy dock. Everything just worked straight out of the box. That was really nice to see. I was also able to connect to my wireless printer and print something out. It automatically detected the printer, downloaded the correct driver, and I was able to print out seamlessly. Now there is one thing to note when it comes to peripherals or devices. I did notice charging devices via that USB-A port was very slow. Quite often I have to charge my camera, my headphones, and other devices via a USB cable. When it came to my camera, it only charged 28% within a single hour, meaning it would take four hours to charge completely, and that was with the laptop plugged into its charger. In terms of battery and usage, I think this is where the device really shines. For me, when I was using this device, I was doing 4K video editing, I was streaming video in 4K, I was doing casual web browsing, and it would only drain the battery by about 20% after two to three hours. For my usage, if you extrapolate that out, that means I'm getting anywhere between 10 to 15 hours on a single charge, which for a Windows device is amazing. The battery life on these devices when it comes to low to medium operations is amazing. However, I did find when I went to export a video I was editing, so to export about a 15 minute video in 4K, my battery dropped significantly. Exporting that 15 minute 4K video did take about 10% of my battery. So battery life on these devices is amazing unless you're doing those extensive operations which max out your CPU. It's just something to be aware of. Now in terms of actual heat when using the device, I did find when I first set it up, it did get a bit warm when it was doing all of the updates, streaming video in 4K and downloading large files. It was a little warm, not hot, and I haven't experienced that since. Even when I'm doing 4K video editing, there's no massive fan noise or overheating, so that is good to see. In terms of software and apps, it was quite nice to see the Windows App Store actually have relevant applications. I was able to download Spotify, Crunchyroll, Canva, a bunch of applications which just worked. When it comes to web browsing, I was using Firefox even though I was using the ARM-based web browser download they offered, I still ran into occasional issues. Sometimes it would just crash, single sign-on wouldn't work for certain websites, and frequently it would freeze for like a second and then all of your tabs would refresh. Super annoying, I had to switch to using Microsoft Edge and Google Chrome instead. In terms of using this device for development, I installed Microsoft Visual Studio Code, which was fine. I also installed Python. I was able to execute and run basic Python scripts. I was also able to install the AWS command line interface and connect into my AWS account and run certain commands. 
I also downloaded Android Studio, created a basic project. Now it looks like you can do mobile development with a caveat. If you want to actually test and verify that your code works, you're going to need to plug in a physical device. The Android emulator, where you have your virtual device running on your machine, does not currently support the ARM architecture, which is quite frustrating. It means you can't test across multiple different devices and multiple different screen sizes. So that is going to be an issue if you're considering this for mobile development. When it comes to AI, there's the inbuilt uh, GitHub Copilot button. I personally found that AI quite slow in its responsiveness and quite often it was just incorrect on so many fronts, giving me wrong code. I would often opt to use ChatGPT just because the responses came back a lot quicker. So yes, it's got AI, but it's more a buzz feature than a usable thing that you would actively use every single day. Talking about AI, I also downloaded and installed LM Studio, which allows you to run uh, AI locally on your machine. Their latest release won't work. However, if you go to this link, you can download a specific ARM based version. It works, but it is quite buggy. The first couple of times I was able to load the large language model and interact and get responses quite quickly, it performed very well. However, after that, on subsequent attempts, it didn't work. So it's quite buggy. And if you're using this for local AI, I would probably advise against it for now, just because you probably are going to run into issues. In terms of gaming, this device is very hit and miss. I wouldn't recommend it for gaming. So I tried Power World, it ran, but very poorly. However, it did run games like Hades 2 very well, Octopath Traveler 2 very well, and Ori really amazing as well. So while it's not a gaming laptop, it can do some gaming, but if it's not optimized for this architecture or you're looking at a massive online game, probably avoid. Now, the big usage for me is video editing. I use DaVinci Resolve to edit all of my videos. I found the performance quite good for a laptop. I was able to skip around and cut and chop videos quite well. It gets a pass for basic video editing. However, that's where it stops. To use DaVinci Resolve, you have to use their latest version, DaVinci Resolve 19, which is currently in beta, and it does have issues. Occasionally, the software would crash, and more notably, if you're trying to use the Fusion tab where you do custom animations and editing, or you're trying to use the color grading tab to do color grading of your films, it is buggy as hell and you're going to have a bad time. I had to change my workflow to do some of the animations in CapCut and other third-party softwares because it was too buggy to do it directly within DaVinci Resolve. I also found that I could do basic 4K video editing. However, as my timelines got bigger and more complicated, the performance did drop. Now I can work with some of the slowness and the bugs. However, the most frustrating part is when you go to export your 4K video, no matter what I do, when I export any video longer than five minutes, there are sections that get pixelated in the final output. I've tried this across multiple different videos and I was never able to get a single file where it was perfect 4K video. It would always pixelate like this, which is super frustrating. So reflecting on all of that, who is this laptop for and would I purchase this device? Again, knowing everything I know now, I would say if you're doing light to medium usage activities, casual web browsing, maybe basic video editing with no custom animations or color grading, just chopping things up, or some basic development operations where you don't need a virtual device running on your laptop, sure, you get a Windows PC that has amazing battery life. I would say yes. However, there are just too many bugs and compatibility issues. So the second question, would I buy this laptop again with everything I know now? The answer is probably not. Controversial, I prefer Windows over Mac, so I'm super excited we've finally got a laptop where we get great battery life. However, the app compatibility just is not there yet. Despite my preference for Windows, I would have been much better off getting the MacBook Air. So those are my thoughts after using this every single day for the last couple of weeks. Great devices, good battery life. However, there's just a ton of compatibility issues with software at the moment. It's something that is going to get better over time, but I have to judge it on the current state that it's in now, not sometime in the future. So that's all I had for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed a honest, unbiased review. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.